In this video, I will talk about the Pareto Principle. This is somewhat equivalent to the 80 to 20% rule. I first heard of the Pareto distribution way back in college sometime 33 years ago, but I understood it as Pareto distribution as a principle in economics. And then later on, after maybe 10 years or 15 years, I came to discover the 80 and 20% rule which is also embodying the wisdom that is contained in the Pareto Principle. So what does the Pareto Principle tell us? Well, it tells us that 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the causes. Well, you know what? That shouldn't be interpreted literally. It's not like when we do the math, on the results and uh, the causes that contribute to the results, we should not expect that if we were to do the numbers, it will fall perfectly at 80% and 20%. No, that is, not, that is not the wisdom that is behind this principle. The wisdom that is behind this principle is this. Significantly many results are due to a few causes. The causes for many significant results are due only to a few. Let's say, for example, your, your situation right now. Maybe you are a happy person or maybe you are a miserable person. There are many things that contribute to that. But those causes of your state, they do not contribute equally to your state. A few of them contribute significantly to, to whatever your conditions are at the moment. That is the wisdom behind the Pareto Principle and the 80 and 20% rule. So the Pareto Principle, I see this often. I mean, I am already old enough to be your father. So I am the kind of person who already saw a lot. And I saw the Pareto Principle operating in classrooms, in performance, in team sports. So let's say, for example, in a group project. You always do group project because your teachers cannot manage your output if each one of you were to produce an output. It's too much of a job for a teacher to handle uh, an output like that. So what she or he does is the teacher groups you into groups of five members each. And this is what happens in a group project. Only one person out of five will significantly contribute to the completion of the project. He or she is behind 80% of the project. What else? In basketball, we see this a lot. Of course, many things contribute to winning a game. But ultimately, it's the points. A team wins through the points. And you know what? The productivity of the players in making the points is not even. A few of them significantly contributes to the points made by the team. So Michael Jordan, for example, makes something like 30 points in a game. So let's say, for example, a 100 points is the winning points at the end of the game. He contributes one-third, one-third of those points, when in fact, the roster of members in a team can be somewhere between 12 and 15 players. I was also once a, a player of basketball and the one person that contributes significantly to the performance of our basketball team is the feeder. The feeder is how we call our lead man. I don't know how that person is called now. But the feeder is basically the man who sets the play. He is the man who brings the ball to our court. He signals the, the play that has to be made. And without the feeder, the rest of the team is practically clueless about what to do in a game. So here, in a team of five members during a particular match, one person out of five is the true axle of the wheel. If I were to use a metaphor, he is the one who will dictate the performance of the team, the feeder. Again, application of the Pareto Principle. This time, this one has to do with hazards and disasters. 20% of the hazards 
are direct causes of 80% of the disasters. Let us take for example the case of fire. If you were to look around you, practically everything around you is a potential cause of fire because many things are combustible materials. But from those many potential causes of fire, these things stand out. Faulty electric wiring, you know, electrical appliances and devices whose electricals break down, cooking equipment. In my house, these are the three which I saw truly had the potential of causing fire. In exercise and training, you know what? I spent my, the period of my being young adult as an athlete. I was an athlete of something like 15 years. I was a triathlete, you know, swimming, biking, and running. So I want to show you this diagram. So let's say, for example, this represents... The, the volume of training that I do, training and exercise, and this is my overall performance. What is that 20% that contribute to the 80% of my performance? I can tell. I am now retired, and when I look back at my experience as a competitive triathlete, I know what it is. That 20% is form, or sometimes what you call technique. And this technique contributes to 80% of my performance in triathlon races. I will flash to you some of my bragging rights, a few of my bragging rights. So I competed in the 2007 Subic Bay Long Distance Triathlon Asian Championships. And I came out 10. I was a top 10 placer out of maybe 100 or 120 uh, participants. And I am the oldest of these 10. I was already 37 years old when I competed in this race. Triathlon was my old flame. And so, the Pareto principle, the 80-20% rule also apply to exercise, training, and competition. And from my experience, the 20% of my training that contribute to 80% of my performance is form, technique. So swimming has a proper technique. If you got it wrong, I'm telling you, you will not do well. So why is that? Why is that so? It's something like this. The standard distance is 1,500 meters. So when you swim, there is a cycle of techniques, of strokes, of movements that you will do over and over again until you finish the race, the 1,500 meter race. But one cycle of the form is composed of many things. You have the strokes of your arms, the breathing, the partial rotation of your shoulders, the kick. All of that are contained in one cycle of the technique. Let's say, for example, in one cycle of the technique, you are able to cover one meter. But you will swim 1,500 meters. And if you are not doing the technique correctly, that means... You are doing a set of 1,500 wrong cycles of the technique. That's a lot. That's 1,500. That's why you can just imagine the significant contribution of doing each of the technique properly. It's the same with cycling. You know what? People who don't understand cycling, they just see this as pedaling. No. There is a proper way to pedal. There is a proper way to spin the pedal. And how many times will you spin that? Well, let's say, for example, you are spinning it at 90 revolutions per minute. There is a proper way to do it. But if you are doing it the wrong way, you are making an incorrect execution of, of the effort, of the motion, 90 times per minute. Now, how long would it take you to finish the bike leg of a race? Well... Something like 1 hour and 30 minutes. So that is 90 times 90. 8,100 revolutions. If you are doing it wrong, each of them that contributes significantly to a performance. If you are doing each of them correctly, that will contribute significantly to a very good performance. It's the same with run. There is a proper way to run. And you will make something like me, I make 180 strides or foot strikes per minute. And if we translate it to 60 minutes for one hour, let's say, for example, a 10-kilometer run for a newbie runner, 
So that's like 10,800 strides or 10,800 footsteps. If you are doing each of them correctly, that contributes to a significant improvement in performance. So that is my experience with the Pareto Principle as an athlete. If this were the volume of training that I do, and this is my performance as a triathlete in a triathlon race, 80% of my performance is due to 20%. It's due to 20% of the training that I do. So what is that 20%? That is the training wherein I pay attention to form and proper technique. 